references that you've got in your document. The next thing that it does is up in your YAML, it'll include this line here, bibliography, and it will automatically then create a bibliography at the end of your document. It's important to know these things because you might want to do this manually, right? You might want to put this YAML in yourself and create a reference bib document yourself. Basically, you create it by creating a text document and save it as reference.bib. And the reason that's useful to know is because you might not want to use the automatic search function that it's got built into RStudio. You might want to bring citations across from EndNote or something or create the citations yourself, in which case you can do this manually. And of course, you can also determine the style that the bibliography is gonna be in. And I'm gonna talk more about that in the video where I walk you through the PDF that I've created. Next, you might want to include calculated values in the text itself. So in instead of creating a chunk of code, which kind of renders separately from your narrative element, you might want the output of your code to be actually part of your narrative. Here's an example. The average height of Star Wars characters is 1.75 meters. Now, I didn't, in the actual code, if we look in RStudio here, this is the code that got used to create that. I've got here, uh, the average height of Star Wars characters is, and then I don't have 1.75, I've actually got some code here that produces that output from the data. The reason this is important is because you might have data that's getting updated, and this way your reproducible document is always updated. When you push render, it will refer to the latest data that you have and update that particular value. And so that you know how to include that code, you use little backticks. Okay, so I've got it here in this document here. You put two backticks around this text over here, the stuff that's underlined in yellow, and it will know that that needs to be executable code that gets inserted into your text. Next, I wanna talk about a thing called a div. You can actually, divide up your narrative text and have very specific formatting for a very specific part of your text. And I've illustrated that here by saying, look here, most of my text is all in one column, but here I've wanted it to be in two columns, right? So I've put in what's called a div. Now, when you create a div, you've got a lot of control with respect to the attributes of the text that you're gonna put in there. I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video. It would take too long. I'm gonna get into a bit more of that in future videos, because you can see here that I've actually specified the width of the columns and the style, et cetera, et cetera. What I want you to know is that this section over here is not written in the regular visual aspect of RStudio but instead we've gone over to what we call the source. And here in the source, you get to control a lot of these sorts of narrative element formatting. So in this case, for example, I've got three dots and I've got column margin, and that's just an instruction to stick this particular set of 